Just getting my kit ready for today's session. This video is gonna be all about how you can catch more carp on a budget. So let's get the rest of the kit ready and head to the lake. Where I've come to today is a day ticket fishery. What that means is that you pay a one-off amount of money and you get to fish the place for the day or for 24 hours or for however long you've paid for. It's relatively cheap. However, in the long term, if you're fishing quite often, you're probably best off joining a fishing club. A club might cost you, I don't know, 50, 80 pounds, maybe even 100 pounds for a year, but then you get to fish their selection of waters as many times as you like. However, if you're a less regular fisherman, if you're just coming out for a day, trying it out, a day ticket fishery is probably the most cost effective way to do it. You can find places that are free to fish, like some uh, park lakes or rivers, uh, and sometimes ponds like in towns and stuff, or on public land. Uh, but definitely do your research, uh, check uh, that you've got permission to fish there. And I would suggest if you're trying to keep your costs down, avoid syndicate waters. Syndicates are more exclusive, they let less people fish them, there's often a waiting list, and the price, if there's big carp in the syndicate, uh, can be very, very high. So avoid that and probably come to a day ticket water if you're, uh, if you're not fishing too often and you're just trying to get into it. Now, because I've paid for a day ticket today, I wanna to make the most of my fishing. There's no point fishing an area of the lake where the fish aren't. So I spent a decent amount of time looking for them, walking up and down a couple of banks, trying to find where there are signs of fish. I've seen some bubbles down in this margin here, close to the bank. And I've seen one or two fish cruising as well out in the middle. So this area here means I can kind of cover a few different areas. I'm confident that there's actually fish in this part of the lake. The rig that I'm gonna put on both of these rods to fish on the bottom to start this session is probably the simplest and cheapest rig that exists. Just a basic knotless knot. So let's tie it up. Let's start with the kit that you'll need some coated braid, size eight or six wide gape hooks, a baiting needle, a stripper tool, some scissors, bait stops, and finally your chosen hook bait. This is up to you. Take around 12 inches of braid off the spool. Next, strip around three to four inches of the plastic coating back. The supple section will give the bait and the hook natural movement. Tie a small overhand loop this loop will hold your bait. Thread your bait onto the baiting needle and then pull this down onto the loop. Now secure your bait in place with a boilie stop. Take your hook and thread the braid through the back of the hook. Wrap the braid around the shank of the hook, trapping the hair in place. This is called a knotless knot. Once you've gone around the shank seven to 10 times, you can then thread the braid back through the eye towards the point. In the other end of the braid, tie an overhand loop knot. This knot will be used to loop your rig onto your lead arrangement. With the rig ready to go, we'll take a lead clip action pack. These packs have everything you need to set up a neat and tangle free setup. Firstly, cut off a length of tubing. Cut the end of your main line with some scissors so it's pointed, and then carefully thread the line down through the tubing. Once at the end, take a tail rubber and thread it onto the line followed by a lead clip. Lastly, tie the main line to one of the swivels provided in the pack. For this knot, we like to use a half blood knot, but a Grinner or Palomar will also work. Be sure to wet knots when using monofilament or fluorocarbon lines before you tighten them down, as the line can be damaged by the friction otherwise. Now you can pull the swivel into the lead clip until it clicks into place. Attach a lead of your choice. A small lead of one to two ounces is great for shorter casts. Then wet the lead clip slightly and slide the tail rubber down, pushing it gently over the lead clip. This clip allows the lead to come off if you were to get snagged up or snap your line on a fish. Now the tubing can slide down and into the end of the tail rubber. Next, take an anti-tangle sleeve and use a baiting needle to thread it down onto the rig. Then take your rig's loop and pop it over the crook on the quick chain swivel. Now this is the finished setup. It's really easy to use. Just nick on a PVA bag of pellets or throw some corn in around the rig and you're ready to go and catch carp. 
One thing you might want to do, especially if the lake is quite silty or if there's a few weeds on the bottom, is use a pop-up instead of a sinking bait on the hair rig. If you replace your hook bait with a buoyant pop-up, you'll need to pinch on a split shot onto the hook link. Just where the coating ends is perfect. Use the right size split shot to balance the rig like this so that the pop-up sits up but not all the way up off of the lead. So this carp fishing setup will pretty much do you for most angling situations, except those extreme circumstances where you're fishing for massive carp, 50 pound plus creatures in heavily weedy lakes or fishing near snags and stuff like that. Then you might want to spend a bit more money on your gear and go for stuff that you know will not let you down. But as a starting, uh, starting point, as an easy way to get into your carp fishing and start catching fish, you can't really go wrong with the stuff we've shown you in this video. Now it's time to put in some bait and try and get the fish feeding. I've got some sweet corn to do that with. You can buy tins of corn, but you can also buy uh, frozen bags. The bags tend to be a lot cheaper and you get more bait for your money. But if you're going to be putting corn on the, on the hook, you want to use real sweet corn. Maybe you're free lining it or fishing it underneath the float. You want to put it on the hook. The grains inside the tins are much firmer grains of corn and they're often larger and more resilient. So. If you're looking for hook baits, get yourself tins. If you're looking for loose feed, just grab a bag like this. I will also use some pellets later on, and what I'll do with those is put them into small PVA bags and hook them onto the rig, cast them out. A little bit of pellet can be a great way to draw the fish in uh, to your hook bait. PVA bags are a really accurate way of fishing, and it means you don't waste any bait. It's nice and, uh, nice and neat too. Another thing that I will probably try, especially if the sun stays out, is some stalking, some surface fishing with bread. Uh, dog biscuits are a good bait to throw out and draw the fish up to the surface and then bread is a great bait to put on the hook because it's soft, you can use a big piece if you want to cast far, a small piece if you want to just go close in, you can squeeze it and it will sink. Bread is a really cost effective, uh, cheap and quality bait to be honest and you can fish it in a lot of different ways. Anyway, let's get this bait in the water and try and get the fish feeding. Just cast out next to the overhanging uh, leaves down there. That plant has got the biggest leaves of any plant I've ever seen in my life. Anyway, uh, the rod's in the water and I'm not actually gonna put my rods on alarms today. I'm just gonna lay them down on the ground. Bite alarms are obviously important when you're night fishing and you need to sleep and be woken up by a bite during the night. But if you're just doing day fishing, like I am today, just I can just sit there on my unhooking mat rods down on the ground and as long as I keep my eyes on where that line goes into the water and listen out for the clutch going I don't need bite alarms and that can be quite a expensive uh, investment when you first get into fishing is alarms but to be honest you don't really need them up until the point where you're doing night fishing anyway I'll slacken the drag off of both of these reels so that fish can easily pull line off of that so I'm not going to lose my rod and we'll watch those lines and see if the fish picks up the bait. There we go, nice little carp caught on the sweet corn rig. They're bubbling up down there still, they're still feeding, um, but there's quite a lot of fish cruising around out in the middle, so. I'll give it a bit longer, but then I might try and catch one off the surface. I just baited up the spot again. And one thing that I would probably advise if you're trying to you know, keep your fishing relatively uh, cheap is that you don't have to always feed loads of bait. Some waters require a lot of bait to get them, you know, on your spot. If you're pre-baiting or something on a big river, yeah, you're probably going to need quite a lot of boilie or pellet to keep them on your spot. But today, I'm on a reasonably well-stocked water, and I think all you really need is that little handful of bait to get you the one bite. I put out a handful or two, flicked the rod over the top of the bait, caught one, and uh, I've just dropped you know, another handful or two back over the spot. As well as that, I am using the little PVA bags. Uh, I find PVA bags is such an accurate way 
of fishing, you're not wasting any bait. You know, there's a small handful of pellet there, probably costs a few pennies, but it's all directly around your, your hook bait. It's none of it's wasted. Um, and I find, I find that, you know, a really, really effective way to fish, especially on, on waters like this. You know, that little handful of bait directly on your rig, a little scattering of corn around it to, you know, to draw them in and to get them feeding. Works quite well. We'll see if, it, uh, see if it pays off with another bite though. Ooh, that's one. Well, this one is a linear carp. You see the beautiful line of scales down its, down its middle. Uh, another qu quite quick bite, but probably not the biggest fish in the lake. Given the conditions, the fact that it's warm, there's carp cruising around on the surface, and the fact that I've caught two quite small carp, I would like to go stalking and try and pick out something a bit bigger, cast a bit of bread on the nose of a larger fish, and we'll see how that goes. I've returned to the carp, grabbed a few bits of kit, and what I'm about to do is try and catch a carp off the surface. For this, because I don't have to cast particularly far out, I can free line. Freelining is basically the process of taking a hook, tying it onto your line and yeah, casting a bait in front of a fish with nothing else on the line whatsoever. It can be a great way to fish at close quarters and uh, I'm hoping it'll allow me to try and pick out something a little bit bigger as well. It'd be nice to spot a slightly bigger fish, drop a bait in front of it and try and catch it. So that is what we're about to do now. I was going to try on the other lake over there where there are some bigger fish but I've actually seen a couple of brightly coloured koi cruising around in these reeds so uh, I've taken the same hook that I was using for the cart rigs earlier and I've put that on I think 10 pound line I've taken a little chunk of bread I'm going to slip that hook into the bread if you want to fish uh, down on the bottom you should take the white bread uh, you know, the middle of the white stuff and squeeze it down. But if you want to fish on the surface, you really want to take the crust because that will float better. I give it a little bit of a squeeze to help it cast further. But if you squeeze it too hard, it will sink. Out there though, I can see, it looks orangey color out near those reeds. So I try and cast as accurately as possible in front of it. Now, if the fish does take it, I will need to set the hook because I don't have a lead on the line. The fish won't hook itself. I'll need to actually whip the rod up and reel in as quick as possible to pull the hook into the fish. But that's if the fish takes it. We'll see. There he is. <laughs> Tiny bit of bread off the surface. Didn't even need to throw any dog biscuits out to get them going. Just put it right next to the reed. Apologies for the guy mowing the lawn up there. It's quite noisy. But I have finally got a koi. Yeah. Last week we spoke to our sponsor, Corda, and decided together that to celebrate the launch of their new Basics range, we'd run a competition on this channel. The prizes will be three fully loaded Basics tackle boxes with every terminal tackle item inside, including mainline, plus the carp cradle unhooking mat and the distance sticks. To have a chance of winning one of these three mega prizes, just leave a comment on this video and be sure to subscribe to the Fishing Tutorials channel. The rest of the competition rules are down in the description below. Big thanks to Corda for putting forward this prize. Now let's get back to the session. Yes. Oh. <laughs> that was epic. Oh, 
example, there is one bright orange koi and two bright orange koi. <laughs> Hopefully this video shows you that carp fishing doesn't have to be expensive. You can use simple tactics such as free lining with bread uh, and even someone as uh, inexperienced as Alex can catch, <laughs> catch carp. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Fishing Tutorials for more videos like this. Woo, wriggly fella.